Hi and welcome back to another mixed media project. Today I'm going to create a three-dimensional steampunk owl and I will be showing you the dry brushing technique. It's really fun and very easy to do. For my owl I will be playing with this grey board. This has more than 50 die cut pieces. They are nice and thick and you can build them one on top of the other. And I'm planning to make a little 6x6 canvas. This is just an MDF that I am planning to stick my owl on top. The grey board that I'm using today with all those die cut pieces is from uh, Ser Vagabond, designed by Antonis Giannidakis for Stamperia. And there is no right or wrong on how you can put the owl together. They have a suggestion on their website, which is this one in the photo. However, I'm going to show you a completely different way on how you can put the owl. And the idea here is to have half of it as an organic normal owl, but the other half as a mechanical one, since I'm going for a steampunk look. You may find that your fingers will get uh, black. That's just because um, the laser cut leaves that uh, dirt on top of the grey board. This is really easy to just clean up with a baby wipe. And all I'm doing here is to just popping out all those pieces, cleaning out the little bits and pieces inside those gears. And I'm just auditioning all the pieces on top of the owl, trying to decide what looks best and how I can put it together. None of those pieces at the top are glued down at the moment. I can move them around and once I'm happy with uh, how the owl looks, then I can go ahead and stick them down. At this stage, I'm still following the suggested uh, design on how you can put it together, having that uh, big gear at the center of her belly. However, this is where I decided that I want to take a completely different turn, where I will have uh, half of the owl as a normal owl with the feathers and everything, and the other half with the gears. So I'm going to start sticking down some of the pieces that I know where they are going. For that you can use any type of PVA glue or any other strong glue. I'm using here Tacky Glue by Simon Says Stamp and I find that it works great for those pieces. Now I'm going to glue down the part for the eyes, but it has two gear eyes. Since I'm going for a normal owl for half of it, I chopped off that gear so that I can recreate a normal eye. I'm going to pop out all those bits and pieces from that other gear and stick it down. Now I'm going to give her a normal eye, so I'm using those circular cutouts and these are actually the things that I popped out from the gears. So don't throw away anything, you can use them as part of your composition. Now at this stage I'm sticking down an eyebrow, but you will see that I'm going to peel it off and change my mind later on. Just remember that when you are creating a composition like this one, there is no right or wrong. Just do what is pleasing to your eyes. And in any case, you can always find a way to change things up later on if you don't like something. Also, I don't throw anything away. Every little bit and piece that I pop out of the gears or uh, that I have on my table, I'm going to keep it because those little uh, circles that I pop out, I will use them later on as bolts or uh, nails. They are going to give a lovely look on the steampunk part of my owl. This is the half of the owl that is going to have feathers on her belly all over while the other half will have the gears. And this is the circle that was supposed to go there, however I don't want that to be all over my owl for the design that I'm going for, so that's why I'm going to cut it out. I'm just going to use eyeball it and just draw a line about the middle of the circle, it doesn't have to be completely precise. And I will do that for the other circle as well, and then I will use my scissors to cut them out. I will use only half of it. I'm going to put on some music and let you see how I put together my composition and I will catch you back once all those pieces are glued down.
And here she is, ready to go, all the pieces are down, and half of her is full of feathers while the other half is full of gears. So you get two looks in one owl. I absolutely love the results and all the pieces that I used come from the same grey board and I still have more pieces that I haven't used yet. I am going to cover up completely my owl with black gesso. I have some thick gesso here which I'm going to thin it down with water. I'm going to apply a first layer to make sure that I covered up everything, dry it out and then I did go ahead and covered it up once more with a second layer just to make sure that I don't have any areas that I didn't cover. You have to be very thorough with this step since this is quite dimensional and uh, there are always uh, nooks and crannies that the brush cannot go. Another way is to just use a black spray but I didn't want to go outside and uh, spray there so I just went the safe way with my brush and just being patient. Having black all over, it kind of uh, disguise all the dimensions that we have, but we are going to bring it out with dry brushing later on. I'm going to leave it aside to make sure that this is completely dry, and uh, while this is drying, I'm going to work on my main canvas. Since I'm planning to do a lot of work on the owl, I decided to go simple with the background, that's why I will use this lovely rice paper. Again, this is from the Ser Vagabond collection, and it is full of gears, which makes it a perfect background for my owl. So I'm going to pick up a side, just turning it around to decide what I like the most. And I'm going to cut out a piece and stick it down. For sticking that down, you can go with a collage medium, you can go with your matte medium, I did apply a generous layer of matte medium here and I'm sticking on top my rice paper making sure that it is nice and flat. Then I'm also going to apply matte medium on top which is going to make sure that this is stuck down nicely and it is going to seal it at the same time. And if you end up having some creases or some bubbles on your rice paper, it's not the end of the world, just embrace them. They're going to give character and extra texture on your finished project. If you want, you can wrap the excess rice paper at the back, you can cut it out with uh, your scissors, just tear it off with your fingers, or even use a sanding block. I am using a sanding block here after cutting it out with my scissors, just to make sure that I have a nice and neat edge. Before I stick down my owl on top, I'm going to do some more uh, work on the background just to make it look more interesting. For that I'm using a stencil from the Ser Vagabond collection and I'm using mainly the part with the um, text. I'm applying over it some uh, modeling paste. I went with white paste, which I'm going to spray later on, and it's not going to show as bright as it is at the moment. But for this specific design, I think that a black paste as well as copper one would work great. So here I'm going with a brown spray to add some color, and at the same time I'm coloring that paste, which I didn't want to look so bright. And what I like about this technique is that the color kind of uh, nests in between those letters and it creates some shadows that helps that texture of the paste to pop out even more. Now, I cannot stay away from splashes, but since I'm going for a steampunky look and feel, I decided to stay away from white. That's why I'm adding splashes with my black gesso that I have thinned down with water. And finally it's time to stick down my owl. I'm going to give a good generous amount of glue at the back and this is strong glue and it grabs quite quickly. So I'm going to stick the owl on my canvas and let a few minutes for the glue to dry. And then I can go ahead and do the fun part which is dry brushing. For dry brushing you need to work with acrylic paint which is quite thick. So preferably the acrylic paint that is inside the tube. You don't want to work with fluid acrylics. I decided to go with the Vivace collection by, of acrylic paints by um, Stamperia and you will find the exact colors that I'm using linked down below. Now I'm going with an ivory color with uh, a light brown and a darker brown and these are the three colors that I will be working on for the side of my owl that is uh, organic, that is the actual owl, not the mechanical one. I'm using this um, blue tape just to separate those two areas so that I don't make a mess on the other side. 
I will work with a stiff brush and I'm starting from darker to lighter. So first I'm going to dip my brush on uh, that dark brown color and this one is called Terra Dombra if you want to know the exact name. I am working with a completely dry brush. This is really important. You can dry it out on a separate piece just to make sure that you don't overload your brush and then lightly just go over the areas. Since I am working with dark brown over black, you won't see much of a difference here, but it really makes a difference in real life as I don't want to have black feathers to start with. As I'm going lightly over my owl, only the top feathers pick up that brown color, which uh, is going to leave all the nooks and crannies still black. Before you go ahead and do the second color, it is really important to make sure that the first layer is completely dry, otherwise the next color is not going to add some highlights, but it is going to blend with the color that you have underneath. So make sure that you dry it out and I'm bringing in some light so probably you can see better how it looks. I am uh, brushing out any paint that I have on my brush on just a piece of uh, paper towel and I can move on to the next color. So now let's use that uh, lighter brown, this is called Biscotto. And lightly again I'm going over the feathers and the rest of the raised areas. The paints that I'm using here are acrylics and they are the normal acrylic paints that dry nice and matte. I want that for the part of uh, the owl that is uh, more organic, but for the other part of the owl where all the mechanical parts and the gears will be, I will use metallic acrylic paint and you will see the big difference between the two parts. I'm moving on to the ivory color with a clean brush which is again completely dry and I will lightly go over the same areas adding highlights here and there. Now this lighter color is going to make the whole difference. Dry brushing is a really fun technique, the results are amazing and it really brings to life any dimension. To make it work just remember that you need to work with thick acrylic paints and with brass that is completely dry. Also remember to dry every layer before you go to the next one, otherwise all the colors are going to look the same since they're going to blend. Here I'm working on the eye, making sure that I have a white bigger part, and then on top I'm going again with a darker shade to finish it off. I'm really happy with the result and let's peel off the masking tape so you can see the difference, the before and after. It really brings that owl into life. Now I'm going to make sure that this is completely dry and then I will place that masking tape on the other side of the owl so that I can work on the mechanical parts. Now again I will use the exact same techniques but this time I'm going with metallic acrylic paints, again paste which is nice and thick and I'm going with uh, silver, copper and gold. I will use the same brush, I have cleaned it out and I made sure that it is completely dry again and I will start with my silver one going over the gears and you see how it brings that to life. I'm also trying to catch the light for you so you can see that it is metallic and really shiny. And this is where I didn't want, know if I wanted to go with copper or with gold for the rest of uh, the composition. So I'm going to try it out. There is nothing bad about trying out on your project directly the colors. And this is exactly why I peeled off the masking tape so that I can see how it looks all together. So I'm making sure that the first layer of silver is completely dry and then I will try out another color on top of the gears. I'm just cleaning out my brush and I will go with copper just here and there. If you don't like something you can always go back on top of it with black and kind of erase it and start all over again. There is no mistake here. So I didn't like just the look of silver and copper, so I'm going to give it another go and this time I will go with gold. And I will not like the look of gold either. I felt that it was very shiny 
It was too bright, too yellow, I would say, and it doesn't blend nicely with the rest of the colors. I decided to leave those trials and errors as I am uh, doing that on my project so you can see that nothing works perfectly from the first try. Just remember this is not glass that is going to break, there is always a way to save it. For example, in this case, black gesso is your friend, you can go over it with black gesso and start all over again. So back to the project and what I'm doing here is mixing gold with copper and I like that look better, of course I didn't cover up all the gears, just here and there. And now I will clean up my brush, make sure that this layer is completely dry and I will go back to the silver. Again, lightly I will dry brush over some of the areas and I like how it kind of disguises that yellowish look of the gold, but you still get that color variation. And this is where I was absolutely happy with how that looks and I love that half of it has a shine, while the other one is completely matte. I think it really adds to the finished look. With video editing it looks as if I'm not thinking at all and I start a project from start to finish and everything comes so easy to me. This is not the case. I just struggle with decisions and here is me trying to decide if I want to use a glass eye or not. I decided not to because I'm super happy with how it looks and I'm going to leave it just as it is. In the close-up photos at the end you will see some details like I will have some rivets or screws and uh, bolts here and there which aren't real. All I did was to use my Nouveau drops directly on top of my project and I forgot to film that part so I'm just going to show you here on a non-stick craft mat. I just add a few dots directly on my project and leave them to dry to the touch. Once they are dry to the touch then you can use a tool to poke holes at the center or to create lines on the top that will look like screws. It doesn't have to be a black nouveau drop, any color would work since once they are completely dry you can go over them with black gesso and it is going to blend nicely with the rest of the dimension on your project. And of course this is a step you want to do before dry brushing. Now let's add some finishing touches before we call this project done. I'm going to add a few gears on one corner of my project and I like to put them together in a way that they look connected and uh, as if they would work if that was a real thing. One thing that I absolutely love doing on my mixed media projects or my art journals is to add a quote. So for this project I decided to go with the phrase that says most of us have gears we never use. And I decided to go with the word gears, quite dimensional, that's why I cut out the letters and um, I just used an alphabet tie that I had in my stash and I did cut out many of the same letters so that I can stack them one on top of the other to have kind of a thicker uh, look. They look like chipboard alphabet uh, letters but they really aren't, they are just uh, cardstock stuck one on top of the other, layers of stuck cardstock. I didn't have any chipboard letters to use. Now to bring everything together I'm going to repeat the same technique that I did on the mechanical part of my owl. So I'm going with the metallic paints and dry brushing over the letters and the gears, first with silver, then mixing gold with copper and then one more layer with silver on top. Isn't she just gorgeous? I'm so happy with the result. Anyway. I did print out the rest of the phrase on my printer and I went with uh, white letters on top of black. Just to make them sturdier I'm going to stick them on a thin strip of black cardstock and then I can stick them on my project. And you already know that I love details and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do here on both those phrases. I'm going to stick tiny little chipboard dots. These are just leftovers from uh, poking out and cleaning out the gears from the grey board. But uh, once I stick them down and color them black, they are going to look as if they are nails. Once the glue is dry, just go over them with black paint. And then once this paint is dry, then go over with silver. Just a touch that I didn't even, even use a brush, I'm just going directly with my finger. 
And here it is, my finished project for today, a steampunk owl, a mixed media project that I had so much fun playing with. This one is going to decorate my craft room and it's going directly on my wall. Here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. Everything I used is linked down below. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, because that's the way to tell me that you like my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all so much and have a lovely weekend.